Hello there. There is talk that the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is gearing up to reject demands from Brussels that the UK stays bound to the European Convention on Human Rights. Q lefty meltdown. Firstly, as ever, please kick that YouTube algorithm up the rear by giving this video a big fat like. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check my YouTube channel daily. And secondly, I now seem to have developed a bit of a cough and sore throat, which makes editing video a little difficult, hence why this upload is audio only. And on that, why aren't the supermarkets and shopping malls throughout the UK putting people at their entrances and exits offering a squirt of alcohol-based hand cleaning gel? Something like that could slow down the spread of nasty winter bugs. After all, fit and healthy customers are return customers and worth a bob or two in the long run, I reckon. So according to The Telegraph, the Prime Minister is preparing to reject demands from Eurocrats that if we want a trade deal, the UK must stay bound by the European Convention on Human Rights. And this looks likely to not only get the left into a lather, but also cause a bit of a rift in the Tory government. Both the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, and the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, have previously slated the European Court of Human Rights that passes out the judgments based on the Convention. And the Prime Minister's top adviser, Dominic Cummings, has also been set against these courts for years, and back in 2018 he wrote... If I get involved in politics again, then a referendum on the ECHR should be high on the agenda. And bear in mind most people probably think we're already leaving it because of the 2016 referendum. So imagine how mad they'll be when they realise we're still in it. And he also said that, Provided we are still committed under international law to the Strasbourg Court, then we will continue to suffer from the often abysmal judgments made there. But there will be others amongst the Conservatives that would fight against this move. And I would think that just about every politician on the opposition benches would be against the UK going its own way on human rights. After all, as far as they're concerned, no one in the UK can possibly ever be trusted to look after human rights. The left thinks that these sorts of things have to be dictated to us from on high, i.e. from anywhere as long as it's outside the UK. Anyway, cutting the ECHR out of the UK legal equation would require the repeal of the 1998 Human Rights Act, which was written to make the ECHR enforceable in UK law. And if we do repeal the Human Rights Act, Brussels has now threatened to cease all law enforcement and judicial cooperation with the UK regarding criminal matters. Now, just to be clear, the ECHR is not actually part of the European Union. It is a separate entity. The ECHR and its courts are set up under the Council of Europe, an entity that has 47 member states but all EU member states are expected to sign up to it. And Article 1 brackets A of the Council of Europe statute states, The aim of the Council of Europe is to achieve a greater unity between its members for the purpose of safeguarding and realising the ideals and principles which are their common heritage and facilitating their economic and social progress. Sounds very much like the European Union itself, does it not? Now, all this ECHR stuff sounds fine and dandy, except that some of the court's decisions have come in for heavy criticism. In the John Hurst case in 2005, for example, the court ruled that a blanket ban on British prisoners exercising the right to vote is contrary to the European Convention on Human Rights. The court has also recently ruled that a life imprisonment sentence 
can only be imposed if there is a clear route to release in exceptional circumstances. That means we are unable to impose an absolute life-means-life sentence. And it is Article 8, the Right to a Family Life Clause, that has blocked so many deportations of criminals, meaning the rights of the criminals come above the rights of the victims and above the rights of the citizen to have threats removed for their safety. Oh, and by the way, the famous case of a deportation of a Bolivian chap being stopped because he and his girlfriend had a cat was actually not quite true. He stayed because he had a girlfriend. But sometimes one gets the idea that a system to protect human rights born of the horrors of the worst of the last century has run out of true targets and so been forced to stick it to the law-abiding masses for its own survival. So if we ditch the ECHR, that means that the UK instantly reverts to the Stone Age, right? Well, no. There are UK laws covering everything anyway, and we are signatories to the non-binding UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But what the government seems to want is a UK Bill of Rights. Rights written by the people that live in the UK for the benefit of the UK citizen. Now the first thing to point out is that we did used to have one of these. It was called the Great Charter or Magna Carta. And many people would say that as we now ignore that Bill of Rights, what's the point of bothering with another one? The second is that a Bill of Rights would be brought about by a statute law that could be repealed in a few years' time. It could also be affected by the doctrine of implied repeal, unless we were to do the unthinkable and somehow try to tie the hands of future parliaments, just as we did with European Union law. And the third is the nature of UK law. Under our legal system, Every person has the right to do exactly as they please unless it is against the law. That means you are allowed to do anything you please unless it's forbidden in law. But a Bill of Rights would try and turn that on its head, as a Bill of Rights would say, these are the things you can do as of right. And if they're not covered, then arguably you can't do it. So would our bill have to be a list of things you can't do? Well, that's what the law of the land actually is at the moment. So I'm personally not sure how such a Bill of Rights would manifest itself in the UK legal system. And then there's the really big issue in all of this, that a human right can only be a human right if the human being in question can enforce that right. And as far as I can see, wherever you go in the world, you can have as much justice or as many human rights as you can afford to pay for. Especially if your thinking fits in. And I would bet that many people can cite cases from within the UK where the lack of money and or the wrong thinking on certain subjects has led to a person's human rights being trampled upon. And that's the courts for you. And that's with us being a fully paid-up member of the ECHR. So what are we to do? Set up a UK Commission for Human Rights? Do me a favour, that'd just end up being a money-spinning job creation industry for lawyers and bureaucrats. And that's already the function of government, parliament and the courts, all assisted by the fourth estate, the free press. All such trustworthy entities. Actually, when all said and done, there is only one place in a democracy where the responsibility for human rights in their country sits, and that is with the voter. Every question a voter asks of their politicians adds a little to our human rights. Every demand for an answer from politicians adds to our human rights. Every time we punish politicians at the ballot box adds to our human rights. 
Every little bit of interest taken in what our establishment is up to adds to our human rights. Every hard, contested election adds to our human rights. Every referendum or petition adds to our human rights. But slavishly following the I must vote red or I'll get blue or I must vote blue or I'll get red does nothing but detract from our human rights. So we the voters should demand more from our politicians. Firstly, the oath they take should be beefed up and have severe repercussions for those falling short, and this should be coupled with a more comprehensive recall system so that MPs can be forced to stand down and a by-election held. We need to insist on maximum transparency with no holding back important reports just because it might upset a few people. I could go on, but I'll leave that to you, the listener, to add to in the comments section below. But the main point here is that those human rights are our human rights, as we are the humans that could be affected by them being improperly set up, not enforced properly, or as seems to have happened in the last few decades, they become subverted for one reason or another from their original purpose. Now a change of tack. Right now there are signs that for one reason or another the global economy is slowing down, what with the airline industry putting out warnings of a significant fall off in demand and reports that Chinese manufacturing has fallen by as much as 40%. That means fewer flights, fewer ships transporting less cargo, no Chinese components for Western factories to use etc. Not to mention the major financial indexes showing red across the board. So surely this also means an overall fall in the emission of CO2. Does that mean that we'll very soon see the worldwide rise in CO2 levels start to slow down? Or will it just continue to rise unabated? If there is a sizeable economic slowdown but no accompanying slowdown in the rate that CO2 is rising at, then what are we to make of it? And having looked at the latest graphs today, the relentless CO2 increase remains so far untouched. And it'll be interesting to see if anyone in the mainstream media starts asking these sorts of questions. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it. So what do you think about all of this? Please share and comment and thank you for listening.